Hey, so I want to shoot a video showing you about these uh, lug nuts that broke off these, uh, actually the studs broke. So I'm going to try to fix this. So I want to point out a couple of things. First of all, I don't typically work on uh, American cars. It's a Ford Ranger, I believe it's 2005. I said, no, the studs broke off. So I really don't know what I'm doing. I just, people come to me. I tell them, hey, I don't, I don't work on these kind of cars. I work on the Hondas, but they ask me to do stuff for them, so I try to help them out. Um, do not do what I'm doing in here, because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I'm not even going to show how I jacked it up. You can watch some other videos on that. Uh, but I jacked up the vehicle. Normally, you'd want to break loose the, the lug nut. I only got one left. He's lucky it didn't fall off. The wheel didn't fall off. I only got one left on there, and... Uh, because I got an impact, I can jack it up first and then take it off. But if you don't have an impact, you need to loosen those what's left of your um, lug nuts before you jack it up, or else your wheel will turn on you. Also, uh, chalk your wheels. Uh, I better go find a chalk because I didn't chalk the wheel. Chalk your wheel before you jack it up. A little safety there. And uh, I'm going to go throw a chalk back there, and then I'm just going to take an impact and uh, take that off there, that last uh, lug nut. Alright, so get ready to take this off. On chalk, and again, don't ever listen to anything I tell you. I just do it, showing you how I do it. I like to chalk the, since this is the wheel I jacked up, I chalk the wheel on the opposite corner of this one. That's just how I do it. So let's see if we can get this off. So, lucky you didn't lose that wheel. It's kind of weird that the one lug nut he lost, oops, sorry, um, was gone. So, a couple things. I think what I got to do is uh, take this brake caliper off so I can get at the rotor. Uh, one thing I don't like, I won't know till I get off. Hopefully, behind here, they left a place for me to pound these studs out. And I'll just kind of tackle that. I guess it, boy, I really sheared those off. Look at that. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. So this one's all snapped off. So he snapped three. Lost one lug nut somehow. And then uh, I was just driving on that one. Anyways, let me get a, get some tools and stuff. And we'll figure out how to get this caliper off. Okay, kind of prepping things up here. I got myself a bucket, so when I take my my game plan is when I take my brake caliper off, I'll just set it over there. I'm gonna cheat, and I probably won't get away with this. I'm gonna try to just take the bracket off and see if the whole thing will come off and set it aside. That'll save me a lot of time. Uh, probably what I'll end up having to do, which I don't know, what I should do is take the caliper bolts off and uh, take the bracket the uh, separate the bracket from the coppers and uh, I'm probably gonna end up having to do that but maybe I'll get lucky and I'll, I won't have to kind of the weird thing like used to work on Hondas I just know that would be a 14 millimeter in the back they can Americans when they kind of make metric stuff I'm assuming this is metric since it being like a 16 millimeter which is kind of a weird weird size I don't know why they chose that size but anyways that's what it is um, so I shot some WD-40 on the bracket bolts and I'm just gonna let that soak in and then I'll break this loose here or try to so I got to thinking if I did take off the bracket when I went to put it back together there's those calipers are gonna be all squished in and I'm not gonna be able to get them on anyways so I figure I go back and take off the the calipers all I did is took two 14 millimeter bolts out of the end there bottom one was really loose it's kind of didn't feel like it's on at all, but uh, so hopefully now, yeah, I'm gonna have to push these uh, 
brake calipers and I'm gonna go find a screwdriver and uh, so it'll free up so I can take them off so that's what I'm gonna do next so all I did is took off the 14 millimeters and put them on that bucket alright so all I did is I popped the hood take the lid off the uh, brake uh, cylinder inside the engine bay there that'll get rid of some pressure and I might just take some kind of little tool like I'm just using this little tool here and you just don't want to push on your rotors when I say don't want to push on your rotors you just want to put a little pressure on those calipers and just pay attention to what you're pushing on you don't want to scratch up your rotor you just kind of wedge in here and push around what that will do is push in the piston which is on this side a little bit and then you'll be able to get your brake caliper off there you go so I think that was a good idea doing uh, the bracket separate so now what I'm going to do here see if I can get a shot of it here the sun's really bright so I can't see very good and so right where's my finger right in this area you just have a bolt here and a bolt up there that holds that hole can't see them holds that whole brake caliper on so I'm just going to take that off next um, let me get him back in there the reason why I don't show this kind of real time is because sometimes the, the bolts are stuck and it takes me a long time to get them loose because I'm getting kind of old and slow but let me see how, how loose they are okay uh, hopefully it's a pretty good shot that fender's kind of in the way there um, if I didn't mention it already I turned my steering wheel all the way to the left to the, bring the back of the coppers out and uh, let's see here it's hard again for me to see because there's such a bright glare on the camera but that should be uh, should be pointing at the bottom one there and that top one is uh, in there but it's in the shade so it's probably hard to see sorry about that just right down there somewhere I just uh, got them loose ended up being 15 millimeter again that's kind of a weird size so I got them loose I'll just show you I'll just take that off let me get a try to get a good camera angle for you sorry about that I'm just going to take those bolts off the rest of the way and set it on the take the caliper bracket off That's what's nice about those free floating rotor design. Uh, like if you're working on a Honda Accord, they, that's a bolted in design, it's really hard to work on. But uh, most cars nowadays on the front use this kind of design here. So now I gotta tap those out. It looks like there's actually a lot of room to work in there, hopefully. Uh, so let me see about trying to tap one of those uh, broken studs off. Actually, I'll probably just take them all off and replace them all and get new uh, lug nuts too just to be on the safe side okay it came out a lot easier than I thought um, I'll pop one out for you uh, I got one long one left just so you can see how hard it is it's not that hard of course the one I'm gonna hit on probably won't come out but you should uh, wear some safety glasses and uh, gloves keep yourself from getting hurt and uh, they just slide right out there. You got to put a little oomph into it. Shoot, the camera's in a bad angle. I'll try. There you go. So I'll have to use a punch to get the broken ones off. But that's the gist of it. So I'm going to go through and take all those out. Okay, so I just took my... Uh, so jammer, pounding them out. Luckily, uh, the ones that were sheared off, they still stuck out a little bit. So I just hit them flush with the hammer, and that broke them free. And then I just take a punch and uh, hit them the rest of the way out with a punch. Make sure you wear goggles or glasses or something. Protect your eyes. 
And then uh, thanks to the magic of a uh, reverse time lapse photography, I ran out to the store, local auto parts store, and uh, got some brand new ones. Things are pretty expensive now. It seems like everything's expensive now. Should get done. I always think I'm going to call the shop and ask how much it would cost to have somebody do this. It's actually not that bad. I'm surprised uh, it's going pretty good. So the tricky part is it's 20 bucks for a fancy tool to seat them. And you got to order it and wait for it to come in the mail. Yeah. The other guys, what they'll do is they'll put some washers in a nut. So I'll probably maybe use that old nut and see if I could seat them with a washer. See how it goes there. Anyways, we'll kind of pick it up along the way. All right, so I've been having a little bit of trouble on these things. I tried to put this one in my hand. See what happened there. And uh, I couldn't get it all the way in, and it was like stretching the threads on that. So it kind of buggered that up. Um, maybe I'll try to finish. I'm worried I'm stripping it out and stuff. Um, so I got this tool. All right, here, I'll put a link to that. And this made it doable. So I put this one in, and that one's in flush. But boy, it's hard to put those in. It's really tight on here. One thing I did is I cleaned the holes up there, put a little dab of grease on it, and I went and I got, because it kind of messes up the nuts on when you do this, and they're expensive. Uh, you know, like, I don't like just wasting money like that. So I got one of these uh, pass-through ones, and I'm going to see if that's... Uh, gonna make this easier I'll try it on the next one I got quite a few to do and then I'll probably tap that one out and put a new one in um, so let me try this one I cleaned it up put some grease on there I'm gonna put a little grease on here and I'm actually gonna put a little grease inside this nut and see if it makes it go in easier this tool works really good it's got like a bearing in it that so it spins on that bearing I tried using washers, and the washers looked hard, but I guess they weren't hard enough. And I think what had happened is, as I'm tightening it out, the washer side is giving. Because it's giving, I think it messed up the threads to where this is really hardened. So um, it turns, and it won't give too, because it looks like it's made out of the same stuff that you make impact sockets out so it's not squishing at all so I think that helps it and I did get one on I use a half inch setup and a, a little uh, extra extension that just just a pipe to help me get a little leverage on it but it's a, it's a little bit of a workout um, I might try it with an impact I don't like impacts because they kind of mess up threads but everybody on the internet's doing it with an impact so and I even tried this one with an impact it just went pull, and again, I think it's because of the washers were collapsing, even though you couldn't see them doing that. Anyways, uh, let me give this a try, and uh, I'll save one and show you how to do one. So I'm going to try to film one of these. So on these uh, wheel studs, they got a, the ones I got have a flat side. I just put that towards the uh, flat side towards the center of the spindle or hub or whatever you call it there. Um... I don't think it really matters. They do that so on some vehicles you get, they're hard to get out and you could as you pound it out you could probably just turn it to whatever side you needed. But that's just how I put them in. So you want to position it before you start tightening it down. And I put an old tire iron. Let me see if I can I'll get in there with the camera and try to film this. So I got this old tire iron here. And I just did thread it through one of the deals and it just fits right in there that keeps the as I'm tightening it keeps the hub from fitting and so I put that spacer deal on there it's got a little I put the cone on the outside and then I put my stud on there and so all I gotta do is just start tightening that down I'll see if I can get you a camera angle of it going in let me get things set up here okay so I'll keep it I'll zoom in so you can kind of get a perspective See where the wrench is there. And I'll let you watch that right there. See if we can. I uh, knew that was going to happen. I'll let you watch that while I try to put it down. You'll see it creep in. If it takes too long, I'll just pause it.
that one actually went in really good so a little work out there I think putting the grease on the threads and using that open end not I was trying these closed in ones sorry I'm out of breath and uh, you know they do cap air in there so maybe I don't know although I'm surprised at how well that went in um, so I think greasing things up really helped out that at first one I tried that was rock solid I can of course I didn't put any oil on there I just went at it but uh so got to go around and do that to the rest of them and then pop out that one that's uh, kind of boogered up and then we'll reseat that yeah so greasing them up seems to be the key I figure I'll let you watch me tap this one out here try to get the center and uh you doing it by hand you can feel when the when it bottoms out it feels different you can feel it when you seat it and uh I think there's something else I want to tell you, but I can't remember what it was. Okay, so far, I won't get in the way. See, that's why they got a. That's why they got a flat end on them, so I can get it out of there. So, um, let's see, oh, when. So I don't have a place to put the. I don't know. When I'm putting the last one, I don't have a place to put the tool to keep the hub from spinning. So all I do is I, I kind of wedge it in there, and when it hits, I think I put it down there or something like that, and that kind of worked. So I don't know if. Uh, Show me putting the last one in. Maybe well, let me get set up. I'll try to show this whole one procedure on this one. I hate editing the videos, so hopefully I'll kind of zoom in just a little bit for you. So what I do is I, I grease the the hole up. I was using the Q-tips. They don't work very good though. They leave a lot of hairs behind popsicle stick or something would probably be better. Oh no. I got my should have thrown away the old one. Oh good, the old one looks real old. Get rid of that. So hopefully this shows up. All I'm gonna do is uh, thread up or grease up this and the threads. it up good oh, yeah. and I put that flat side towards the center and I just take this deal here slide it on and I like to put grease in here Now the hard part is uh, wedging this in here. So now I'm just going to play around with it till I get it, get it in there. Anyways, all I do here is I sit there and I ratchet it on okay it took me a little bit to find the sweet spot there so I'll just do a couple spins there and let you watch what I'm doing I just wedge this in here and then I just uh, 
go to town on it like that until it's seated in there. Like I said, you'll feel it. Grease is your friend. When I get done, I'm just going to get some cleaner, degrease all the threads off that. That's an important thing to do because you don't want your thread, your your final lug nuts backing off on you. So you got to make sure you get the. Oh, I remember what I want to tell you. Use one of these battery terminal cleaners. I sprayed some WD-40 in those little holes. Scrubbed it out with that. I did uh, get some. Uh, what grits is this here? This is a 220. Just some sandpaper. Kind of spun that around. Knocked any uh, rust that was in the hole and cleaned it with a rag. And then, then he saw me greasing them up. All right, got her done. Wanted to show you something kind of cool. So, right there, when you clean all the grease off, you should see the shoulder of the non-threaded bolt part of the stud sticking through. And you can see those, if I looked around all the way around, you see that part sticking out. So that's one way, and of course, you know, in the back, make sure it's uh, flush. Um, and that just kind of helps you reinsure. Also, you know, I clean just with the rag, but I, like I said, I'm getting, you want to degrease this and make sure you get the grease off the back because you don't want it flinging up on your brakes. And uh, may, I would not use high temperature grease. This is just general purchase, general purpose bearing grease. That way, if a little glob did fly up on your brake, your brakes are so hot it would it'd melt it and just fling it off like water. But if you use high temperature, um, it might stick on there. You wouldn't want that. You get gum up your brake pads. So I'm pretty much done. Um, this tool is a lifesaver. Also, make sure you get a good bucket to sit on. Save your back there. Uh, when I went to go get the last one off, I just did the same thing. You just kind of wedge. I used an old tire and iron. Just kind of wedged it in there till it locked in. And that doesn't take much to get that off. And I think putting the grease on that bolt on these threads really saved these threads from being damaged. And it made it really easy to take on and off. So I think that was a big help there. Anyways, I hope this uh, video helped somebody out. Again, this is just how I did it. I'm doing it wrong, so don't do what I did. But this should get the job done. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching me. If you like this, give me a thumbs up. And... Uh, and you have a great day.